All right, today is Leviathan Tuesday. Um, I am back at it. We have had a little bit of time off, as you can tell. A couple of weeks of videos missing. Um, not all due to my negligence. I went to Los Angeles to a video conference and came back and immediately got sick. Picked up something in LA. COVID, maybe. Well, COVID kills old fat men and I'm still here, so maybe it was something different. Or maybe I'm just uh, young and spry. Anyway, I'm healthy again, moving on, working on things. Um, Leviathan, you may have um, heard me mention in the past, I've been working on some things on the chassis and I'm getting ready for the subframe to show up. And that is because the rear subframe, which is the floor and framework for the cabin, the living area on Leviathan, is actually being built elsewhere. It is being built by a company here in Southern Oregon called KCI. Now KCI um, manufactures uh, tarmac equipment or ground support equipment for the airline industry. So if you've ever gotten on an airplane by walking across the tarmac and going up a ramp, it may have just been built by KCI. Anyway, they have been working on the subframe. We are gonna go down there and work with them. We're gonna be putting the floor skins on I'm gonna do that in a little different method um, that I've done before, or KCI hasn't used this method before either. It is using tape by 3M. I um, talked with a representative from 3M and they told me this is the way to go. So that floor is gonna be bonded on with tape, a few rivets to hold it in place while that tape cures and bonds to the aluminum. Anyway, we're gonna run down, take a look at the building of the subframe and I'm gonna help them put the floor on. Let's jump down, take a look. Now I still work in AutoCAD, but conveniently my son works at KCI and I just send the drawings to him and he converts it over to a SOLIDWORKS drawing where they create their cut lists and their construction paperwork. And that of course goes out to the shop. The fabricators out there then can get busy building this thing. That's going to be all made out of aluminum tubing to keep this thing as lightweight as possible. Of course, one day this thing will be amphibious, and so we want it to be lightweight above the chassis line just to keep this thing stable in the water. And of course, always good to have less weight as possible. Now the main structure of the floor is made out of a two inch square tubing, and we will go back and infill that floor with a foam insulation. So we'll have two inches of insulation in the floor. Now you see a couple of uh, short tubing pieces in there also. There are some other components that will be bolted to and hang from the subfloor storage compartments, things like that. Flip this thing over and then put the main structural pieces on. We got some two by four inch heavy duty tubing, some run along the length of the chest here on the left subfloor here and uh, some cross pieces also. This is where the three point mounting system will bolt to these pieces and of course uh, then attach to the chassis of the three-point mounts. And this of course also is the main structure of the floor itself, these cross pieces. Now with this uh, build here in the subframe, it's also going to have some vertical columns and a roof. And this will support the fiberglass foam and fiberglass panels that will make the bodywork of this thing. So before those uh, vertical columns we put in, they're going to go ahead and build the roof structure so they can use it to line up the posts perfectly. And one little piece that they're going to add on for me, which is a mechanical piece, is a little uh, pivot point on each corner and that is where the outside or the panels will pivot out to open and expand this thing. So with the roof done, they lift it up, put it on and put the columns in place where they need to be. And then they're going to go ahead and uh, put some diagonal bracing, some bracing in to get things spaced perfectly and get it nice and square. Once it's all squared up and braced, then they're going to add some quarter inch plate gussets on the bottom just to make sure things don't move after it's all welded together. And then we need to pull this roof off. Now this is the day I come in to help with the floor, but they built this system to where this uh, roof system will uh, plug into the columns so that it can come off. We want to keep the diamond plate flooring, have as few cuts as possible. So water jet cutter just cut the access holes for these columns and we'll just pick the panels up, slip them over the holes. It's going to be bonded with tape and according to 3M, the practice is sand the surface, 
clean it with a solvent, put your tape down, and it will bond together. Now, first I thought this tape was kind of expensive, but in the end, it's probably actually a pretty good price point because uh, if we would have to do this any other way, like welding it, we'd have to turn this thing over and try to hold it in place while you tack welded it. And then, of course, you get problems with warpage in the floor, maybe some bumps from the welds. This way, the tape will hold it in place or the possibility of riveting it. We would have had to put thousands of rivets in to make this structurally strong. We'll just put a few rivets in to hold it in place while the tape cures. So we're onto our very last floor panel. One last little uh, grind to uh, make some clearance on one of the columns. And we will flip this thing up, slip it over the column, drop it onto that tape and put some rivets in it to hold it in place. Like I said, not so many rivets to be the structural, just to hold this in place for the tape to cure. So every 12 to 14 inches or so. And I searched until I could found um, some flush mounting rivets. This is kind of similar to the rivets you would find in an aircraft where you don't want rivets sticking up above the wing skins. So they've just got a 40 degree bevel on them. Drill the hole, have a little countersink bevel, and then pop those rivets into place. Now it could have easily had these rivets sticking up since I'm using diamond plate. There's already some bumps in the floor. This will make it nice and clean looking. After I put a coating on here for flooring, maybe those rivets will not even show. And then put the roof back on and this ready. Anyway, as of the airing of this video, that subframe is likely back here to my studio. Well, it's gonna be outside the studio for a while because that beast does not fit into the shop. I'm going to be a little too tall, I'm working on remedying that by uh, redoing some work in the backyard to have a cover for it out there. We'll be able to bring some of the parts inside to work on them when the weather is bad. But like I said, we're going to have to have the lion and outside most of the time because of its size. So likely one of the upcoming videos very soon will be putting that subflame onto the chassis. But that is for our video for today. Anyway, thanks for coming by. Come back to see us again.